I'm the senior producer of a site called CBC Live. It's produced by the CBC, and it's for the fans. We go behind the scenes at all the shows, and we connect you with the casts of those shows, like the amazing cast of Murdoch Mysteries. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of time for fan questions today. We're also going to take questions via Twitter and Facebook. If you're shy, you can send them. Uh, so let's get the conversation started right away. I'll introduce our panel. First of all, we've got an incredible woman. She's the mastermind behind it all. She holds all the secrets to season seven and beyond. She's the executive producer of Murdoch Mysteries. It's Christina Jennings. Yeah, let's give her a big round of applause. Next up is one of the hottest rising stars in Canada today. She plays Dr. Emily Grace. It's the lovely Georgina Riley. She's been a CBC star for a long time, first on one of the biggest shows of all time in the world, Coronation Street, and now on Murdoch Mysteries, it's, uh, oh, it is, where did we go? It's Inspector Brackery, Mr. Thomas Craig. <laughs> on the adorable Ernest Crabtree. You guys? And he's here played by the very funny Johnny Harris. Give him a round of applause. Next up, we fall in love with her just as Murdoch has. She's our heroine. Um, she's the beautiful and talented Helen Joy. And finally, this kind of Sherlock is the Victorian era's super cop, the man behind Murdoch, Yannick Bisson. this would happen when you started Murdoch Mysteries. Pick up your mics. <laughs> Christina, let's start with you. When it, tell us how it all began and if you could have ever imagined this. Oh. So um, we would made a couple of, um, I don't know if any of you read uh, Gail Bowen's books, uh, Joanne Kilborn Mysteries, and we would read those and uh, Gail's agent said, there's another author and she's got these books set at the turn of the century. And what do you think? So I started reading the book. So we optioned Maureen Jennings' book, No Relation. Uh, we made three movies. And one day I got this call from City TV, who was broadcasting the show at the time. And the executive said to me, do you want to do a one-hour series based on Murdoch? And I thought she was kidding. Because I'm going back now nine years. And nine years ago, no one in the broadcast community in the world wanted period. And so I actually didn't pay any attention. And then two weeks later, she called me again. She said, I'm really serious. I really want a series based on Murdoch Mysteries. And that began the seven-year story of Murdoch. And 100 hours later, and in all these countries in the world, so it's quite remarkable. And can you tell us a bit about the power of the fans and what effect they have on the show? Because uh, I've heard you say that your writers actually pay attention to what they say online. Is that true? There's no question. There's absolutely no question that as a producer in this day and age and as a head writer, you've got to pay attention to the fans. And uh, you know, and I, I can vividly remember when uh, when uh, uh, Murdoch and Ogden actually got married. I think Helen at the end of season four. There was quite an outpouring from the fans. <laughs> and trust me, we spent a lot of hours trying to figure out what the heck to do. <laughs> Johnny, you had your uh, mic ready to go. What can you tell us, uh, Dish, about season seven? Well, I just want to say first, thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> It's, um, yeah, it's a really flattering turnout. Uh, we just signed a bunch of uh, autographs for people, and it's nice to see Tom and I actually were invited to uh, the London Comic Con, the equivalent of this uh, in London, England, a couple of years ago. But we were sort of a footnote in the, whole, in the whole thing. We were sort of like getting bored at the autograph table. But I, and I think it would be different over there now. I think that the, the, the season has just grown leaps and bounds. And, um, Obviously, a, a change in Canadian broadcaster uh, did us very well. Um, season seven, I don't know. I, you know, I'm always unclear as to what I can say without giving things away, spoiler alerts and whatnot. So, 
any marriages? <laughs> any marriages? Good question. Not yet.
it's just, it was amazing to shoot, and we took it up a notch with the sets, and, and we, so we have a full sinking ship, and there's a wonderfully romantic stuff where I may save somebody's life. Um, so, I get to do lots of great adventures, stuff like that. So there's already been some incredible uh, episodes this, this uh, year. You'll be amazed. Our, our waiting room is really on fire right now. Uh, you guys probably know that we're going to do 18 episodes this year. And I don't know where they keep pulling these brilliant ideas. Uh, I don't know where they, where they keep getting them, but, but they've been really consistent. I think it might be our strongest season yet for scripts. And um, uh, our showrunner, Pete Mitchell, and I were having a chat yesterday. He said that the networks have been... Um, really happy and excited with the cuts that the, the early cuts that they've seen and uh, yeah it could be the best season yet there's a really funny episode uh, with james pendrick <laughs> he should have come today he turns into a movie mogul this year and uh, he, <laughs> and he wants to make a movie about inspector murdoch it's very very funny and I heard there were going to be zombies. Victorian zombies? Maybe it's time to watch, do you want to see a preview of season seven? Excellent. 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 Excellent.
Oh, I didn't request any lab work. Oh, the filming, yes, of course. Is it true that Ken Prescott is here? Yes, he's a general director of the world. Could he introduce me to the cuts for capturing? Could you not practice my lines with me? Me? <laughs> <laughs> this is a small cell. Oh, I am I have to practice my thing. Writers, all they do is sit at the table. The actors prepare the feast. Thank you. 
right, so they're Haitian zombies. Uh, you guys, there are microphones around the auditorium. Can you see them? If you can start getting them, this, there's one right over there in that corner, some waving. There's one over there. We're gonna open up the floor to you guys if you wanna start lining up for your questions. Meanwhile, while, you, while I, I give you a sec to do that, I'll turn back to you guys. I saw a few things in there that were true to life. You, Yannick, with the biking. It's a passion of yours, right? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun actually to do a biking episode. It was a little tricky because we were riding uh, uh, skinny, tired bikes, but on on dirt. So uh, that, that, we had a few people wipe out. I was one of the ones that was spared, luckily. Uh, but uh, we had a, a guest, a very lovely actor named um, David uh, Christo. And uh, yeah, he fell twice, poor guy. But uh, you know, the, the episode came off really well. It was. And Johnny, you're funny as always. Uh, I don't know if everyone knows uh, that Johnny does sketch comedy and is a comedian in real life. Uh, yeah, he's really good. Um, how much do you get to improvise on set? They let me. They let me mess around a little bit, which is nice. And then uh, they edit it out. And then, <laughs> and then most of it gets cut. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they'll uh, every now and then. I'll, throw a wacky idea in there, and the directors are usually pretty good sports about throwing it in, and, and then, you know, I guess it's a uh, jury by committee in, in, in post with the, the producers and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I get, to, I get to throw something in there every now and then, and, and, and sometimes it ends up in the episode, so that's fun. There's a, a lot of great stuff that Johnny Adlibs, and, and the great blessing of moving over to CBC is that more people are able to watch the show but it's a tiny bit shorter. The episodes are like a minute, a minute and a half shorter now. So a lot of the pearls that Johnny tosses out there, uh, we don't get to see. Yeah, all the jokes I go with, it's very rare that they further the plot line, so. <laughs> so they're often the first things to go on the chopping block. Right? All right, I think we're ready to go. Who's gonna go first? Over there. Hi, first off, big fan of Murdoch Mysteries. Probably, I like it better than Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> well, I should hope so. Ask away, young sir. <laughs> but my question is, is Crabtree a big fan of the supernatural, or is he just sort of uh, obsessed with it? <laughs> Absolutely, you know, uh, I think uh, Crabtree is a, um, a really bright man with the imagination of an eight-year-old, you know? <laughs> And uh, yeah, he thinks, you know, what, what's the, oh, I'm gonna botch it now, what's the Hamlet thing? There are more things in your, in heaven and earth than are dreamed of in your philosophies. Um, he, he, is that Horatio? No, I think it's Hamlet. He says it's in Horatio. Okay, right, right. Anyway, yeah, I think, you know, Craig has got an open mind to all this stuff. And, and, and the, the show comes in at the, at the early stages of scientific uh, forensics. And, and um, so it's, you know, Murdoch is a man of science, and Crabtree does... He's a geek of the times. <laughs> well put, well put. These are your people, John. <laughs> and gosh darn it, we love you. Thank you. <laughs> I apologize. All right, we'll go over here. That's really one of the, the great aspects of the show, is just that there's this fantastical world out there, and I think every one of our characters is, is searching for it, but they're also sort of trapped, shackled in reality, but they are looking for that incredible thing out there. We, we, we look for the Loch Ness Monster this year. I mean, it is chock a block full of stuff like this. It's the one thing Crabtree doesn't believe in for some reason. <laughs> One time. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's actually uh, uh, Brackenway thinks he sees something in Lake Ontario and, and believes that it's uh, some sort of monster. And Crabtree can't believe that anything so dastardly could live in fresh water. So um, I think actually that's an ad lib that made it into the show. Thank you very much. All right, over here. All right. Uh, hi. How, how are you guys? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, the show started with like an established that Murdoch is with the police and you're all friends. 
Well, we haven't had an origin episode where we find out how he became a detective, how he met Dr. Ogden and Crabtree and Crabtree and like um, like his wife, like he had a wife who died early before the show. Well, we haven't really seen that going on. So um, I'll just answer that. I, for those of you who've watched right back to season one, we've met Murdoch's father and we've met his sister, the nun who passed away. We had flashbacks to his life in New Brunswick. Um, and it's so uncanny you're asking this question because we've asked ourselves, should we have a TV special, like a two hour origin movie? <laughs> He's always alluding to his several aunts, and that will be that will be explained this season. You'll find out. Going to the Rock. Yeah, going we'll to Newfoundland. How was shooting in Newfoundland? How was shooting there? We actually uh, we went out to St. John's. Um, uh, 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 Johnny was a, a great host, actually. Uh, a splinter unit of our crew went out there, and we actually filmed and. Uh, um, Crabtree's uh, uh, beginnings were somewhat revealed uh, in the episode, and we get to meet all of the aunts and find out. Johnny, can you name the aunts? What's that? Can you name them? Can I name them? Can you aunt? name, yeah. In alphabetic order? <laughs> aunt Azalea, Aunt Begonia, Aunt uh, Chrysanthemum, Aunt Daisy. Oh, and you're skipping the petunia. Dandelion was the most tired one. <laughs> Dandelion, dandy yeah. Like marigold, uh, <laughs> primrose, Aunt uh, Lily, Aunt uh, Willow. Stop me anytime. Stop me anytime. All right, thank you for your question. Let's go over here. Hi, I would also like to say I'm a big fan of the show, too. And I think it should deserve more attention than just a beaver for anything. Like that. And I was just wondering for all of you if you could choose between the life you have right now or actually becoming your character in the 1900s, what would you choose? Where did you come from? I think Murdoch's really cool. <laughs> That's a tough one. A lot cooler than me. That's true. I would take my IQ from Grace to now. Ditto. Can I have both? I wouldn't take the clothes. You know, there's a lot for women at that time that's just really tough, so I think that I feel pretty grateful for the freedoms that I have now. I wouldn't take on that, but um, I could probably take on a bit of her IQ and general graces and charms. <laughs> um, we have more questions about wardrobe from social media. Richard the Geek wants to know, is there any particular piece of wardrobe that you love or hate? Ladies, gentlemen. This is pretty flash. I like this. It goes on. I'm a t-shirt and jeans, I think. Actually, no, I've been very lucky. I'm the one, the one guy where I, I never had any costume changes. These guys all have to run out to their trailer to change in between scenes because, of course, we'll be shooting various days of the episode. So they have a lot of changing to do, and I'm just stuck in this thing. But for, if you have to wear one costume for seven seasons, this one's pretty sharp. I don't know, Georgina, which part would you lose? Lose? The corset. <laughs> I say it every time. <laughs> but they're beautiful. The costumes are, are beautiful. So it's really fun to get to play dress up, like to the max, you know, working in a period piece as opposed to a contemporary piece. So I think that's really cool. I have a new hat. <laughs> I love it. Thirteen wants to know how weird it feels in those clothes, and let me add to his question by saying, what does it feel like in those clothes now in the heat of summer? Because they are shooting in those outfits now. 
it's one of those questions that I ask myself most days, like why is it in Victorian times, in the height of summer, they wore wool all the time? <laughs> it doesn't make it so much sense, but yeah, so it's brutal actually. <laughs> I, I did an episode where I had to get fitted for a new suit where I was running for Alderman or Mayor or whatever. And we, we kind of realised that they, they wore long johns, whatever the weather, so I think everybody would smell. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't think you get it, obviously it's a clean looking show, but I think the filth of the era and the general BO would be terrible. <laughs> and we've all got nice teeth. <laughs> End of one day I got a fair bit of BO. End of one day I got a fair bit of BO. There's well, one great moment when uh, they were talking about the Loch Ness Monster or whatever Brackenreed saw in Lake Ontario, and there's a fabulous moment. Um, Helen and Yannick are sitting there, and she's in her old-fashioned bathing costume, which, of course, for women at the time was long-sleeved, and the dress, the skirt went way below the knees, and you wore wool tights. And you have a wonderful moment, Helen, when you actually say, and you start taking the tights off. And Yannick is, Murdoch is just flabbergasted. <laughs> yes, yeah, scandalous. Well, the, 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 beach, the beach episode where we deal with the slave monster, um, in the script, it's scripted so that it's happening during a heat wave in Toronto. And we shot it um, at a beach in Grimsby, just east of Hamilton, during the heat wave. All three it, days were the hottest it days was, of the year. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. yeah and all the crew got to 30. run into the water at break, and I stood there in my skirt, just lifted up with my feet in the water because I couldn't get in. <laughs> but yeah, and there was a scene where the constables were all there asking Inspector Brackley if they could remove their helmets at least, because the heat is so bad. So there we are on this beach, begging Tom to take our stuff off, and it, be, and it, it wasn't a real stretch, it was absolutely sweltering. So are you pantless during close-ups? <laughs> <laughs> to stay cool. <laughs> we, we, uh... <laughs> I wish it was that easy with all the suspenders and stuff, you can't actually just wear shorts. Uh, I've, tried. I've tried. All right, we're going to go over here for a question. Hi, uh, Steve. Very big fan of the show. My whole family really enjoys it. You said how important it is to listen to your to the fans. I'm wondering, though, if there's some ESP happening here. Because about a week ago, my 15-year-old daughter was saying, wouldn't it be neat if they had an episode where someone was making a movie of Murdoch during the session of Murdoch Mysteries? And it's pretty accomplished. Thank you very much. All right, over here. Hi, guys. It's always exciting even to hear the theme song come on. You just have to sit down. Best theme in television. Am I right? Um, this could be for any of you. Uh, a plot line. Um, when Hendrick was introduced, uh, he didn't come across as a good guy. In fact, at the end of the show, I told my wife, I think Murdoch's found is Moriarty. And yet, it turns out it's his wife. It's, and was that planned, or have the writers or producers or whoever kind of made an adjustment to allow, because he was such an interesting character, to come back, but be sort of an ally and a, a good guy? That's an, you know, the, the, the process of making television is really organic and you cannot stick with your rules hard and fast, you have to break them. And we had no intention of bringing Hendrick back, but Peter Stebbings is such an extraordinary actor. One, and two, you're quite right, Murdoch sort of met his match. You know, the man of science meets the man of finance and invention. And so they're quite different, so hence um, Hendrick is going to come back and come back and come back. All right, over this side of the room. Hi, I somehow managed to lose the thing you guys autographed for me. Could you do something else for me after the show? <laughs> That's not my only question, I swear. I, I have something else here. I got no problem. Yeah, we'll get it to you. We'll Thank you so you. much. That was um, great. <laughs> and at the end of this, I'll tell you about opportunities to see these guys live at the CBC very shortly as well. Um, all right, uh, at Dinara wants to know, who helps writers with science invention ideas? 
Well, the history books have a large part to say about what ends up in the show. Um, quite uh, literally, everything is accurate within a couple of years in terms of uh, um, discoveries, inventions. Uh, you know, we take some liberties. We sort of truck some we people. We make them your invention. <laughs> <laughs> not always. Uh, we truck some people through Toronto that may not necessarily have come through. But it's, there's a surprisingly large amount of stuff that is accurate uh, uh, to, the, to, to the year and actually um, to the place. Uh, pe that some of these people were in Toronto. And, um, you know, that's the great thing about the show is that it's all been sort of laid out for us. We just have to sort of paste it onto our lovely backdrop. Right, over here, what's your question? Hello, my name is Ashley, and I just want to say that I love you guys, and no other TV show can top you, and... Thank you so much. Thank you. You have no idea how much that means to all of us, and I'm going to tell you why. When we first started out, we were a specific type of show that was very much UK style and kind of old and stodgy. And the people that watched our show were all... <laughs> lovely. <laughs> but the fact that you watch our show is really encouraging. Thank you very much. Go ahead. I love the old fashioned. So. Okay, well, here's my question. Um, I was just wondering, what was your favorite episode? Like, what was your favorite episode that you guys liked doing? Like, what was your favorite episode that you guys enjoyed acting in and like that? Uh, well, first, um, my favorite so far has been um, the first episode that we shot this season was um, the one where they talk about the zombies and, and, and such. Um, I actually had the privilege of directing that one, and I really, really had a great time. Um, some of the stuff that you'll get to see in it, it is very, very funny, and uh, and I think these guys did a, a, an amazing job. And there was a great scene for every one of the actors in the series, and it was a lot of fun. And thank you guys for making it so great. Welcome. Anyone else want to chime in, and then I'm gonna. Um, oh, are we all just gonna mention one. I uh, I really love the Titanic episode, which you saw so part of. It gets really action filled, and uh, the sets were extraordinary. I thought that they really did an incredible job, and we got to do lots of heroic action. So that was fun. Johnny, um, I got to ride a horse in the first season, then never ever did again. <laughs> In the first season, uh, the, the, the Annoying Red Planet, which was also one of my favorite episodes where they think the Martians come and, and, um, and Cra Crabtree whole believes wholeheartedly. They did the, the, the crop circles, they did a great job with it. Um, and, but anyway, yeah, me and, uh, me and Yannick come swinging into town on, on horseback, which I thought was pretty cool, and then, and then that was it for the horses. And then I think, like, did I do it so poorly that it's like, okay. <laughs> The producers had a secret meeting. Never put Harris on. I think you ended up backwards on it at one point, didn't you? I had to fall off the horse, yeah. <laughs> they, they told me about 20 minutes before we shot the thing. I, I, think Thomas. I think it's the same episode, but being an English actor, I very rarely would ever get to work in westerns, and we did the Buffalo Bill episode from season two. <laughs> and, uh, my, my favourite moment actually made me look a bit silly because we're chasing after a bad guy. Yannick gets a horse off the floor rides with one hand and lassoes the geezer with his other hand. And meanwhile, I'm running her back, back behind him with a stick. <laughs> I felt really cool. Georgina. Very really good. Um, oh, there's so many, but I really enjoyed, Helene and I were talking earlier about anyone, anytime we just get together, it's only us in the scene, it's just a bunch of giggles for ages. It's the poor people who are just coming in for the day don't know what's happened to them. So um, I enjoyed that from last season when we are doing the investigation in the church because it's always a really good time. Christina, an all-time fave. Me? An all yeah. I like the dinosaur, ex the, the dinosaur episode. Um, I, I was fascinated. We actually went out and shot in Alberta at, uh, what's it called, Drumheller. And I like that one a lot. It also touched on the future, if any of you remember, 
where we imagine in Murdoch's mind that there is a woman and a young son. And the romantic can be really like that, because it might have been Ogden, so. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley, that was a really good question. All right, we've got about 10 more minutes to chat together, so we're gonna go back and forth and get through as many as possible. Hello, um, I actually have a question for Johnny. Um, I was just wondering if George has any more novel ideas that he might be working on this season. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, the way it turned out, the Crabs, you had a great time with the, uh, the Egyptian uh, adventure story novel. And, um, but then, the, you know, he found out that fame was a fickle beast and, and he was sort of the, the uh, toast of the day, but just for a day. And, and then, um, yeah, well, I, and, and also part of it is the whole scheme of our webisodes, the uh, online uh, component of uh, of um, of the series, uh, but we didn't really do a big uh, uh, a series like that last year. Although it might come back, we might be doing a more adventurous webisode uh, thing for this season. Great, Julia from Twitter wants to know: Would you like to do a singing episode? No. I would. <laughs> yes. No, Georgie. No. It's not yes. happening. We get it. We don't we don't get a lot of time to do. Or we're so flat out with uh, w with shooting. You know, we, we shoot. Uh... Maybe we could just make it a stage show. <laughs> that means we'd have to do it more than once. <laughs> Definitely not. You know, we we shoot nine or ten uh, pages a day. So the most rehearsal I have, I found it quite weird coming from a theater background that you never sort of uh, and in theater you rehearse stuff ad nauseum, but. Um, in TV, it's just sort of, you know, you might, you might take the, the actor you're doing the scene with aside after you've blocked it out and say, hey, can we run these lines and blah, 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 have a little discussion about it. But it's very much just sort of like you read it and learn it and do it the way you think it should be done, and so does the other person, and you just show up on set and, and hope that it gels. Yeah, it's point and shoot. I could coach you to sing on weekends. <laughs> Stop trying to get out of a musical episode, Johnny. We're going to go over to this side of the room for questions. Um, I'm wondering if you have a favorite villain? Anyone? The Joker. <laughs> oh. I had, I had really high hopes for, uh, for Pendrick's wife to, to, to become a real evil villain, and uh, like Christina says, you know, these things change. Um, generally, we hang them so they don't uh, <laughs> they don't uh, hang out uh, too much. But uh, James Gillies is back this year, and uh, he's he's bringing a, a, a special brand of evil this time. We're trying. We're really trying. We can't say too much about that one, but we all saw him smile at the end of the season finale, so we know something's up over here. Do, oh, wait, do, does any of the any super fans out there know the name Gideon Catchpole? Gideon Catchpole, come on, guys. He was uh, give in you the, one clue. The Hangman episode, and he was he, I think he was he was uh, he was Helene's morgue assistant. And he turned out to be the villain. I don't know why, I just always loved the name Gideon Catchpole. He was also super creepy. He was very good. He was good. He was really very good. Actor. I like that villain. Go ahead. Uh, I got a question for Johnny. Uh, do you ever read the script or you know, hear yourself talking and then just. He never words? reads the script. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my words, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, well, do you ever hear yourself talking as Crabtree and you just think, what am I? Saying, like, am I actually talking about zombies right now? Is this actually happening? Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, the guy is just, 
it was just a wild imagination, and he's open, he's open to anything. But we sort of strike a good balance with the, the fellows in the cast, because you've got Crabtree on one end, who just thinks anything is possible and gets excited and enthusiastic about it. And then we have Brackenreed on the, on the, he's the polar opposite. He's very skeptical and thinks Crabtree's foolish with these ideas, and very realistic. And then you got uh, Murdoch in the middle, he, the man of science, and he sort of, he has, he's somewhat skeptical, but also entertains things on, uh, on their own merits, and, uh, and just wants to find the truth of it. So is this sort of a good dynamic going on between the three dudes? Uh, we have time for one last really quick question. Um, is there anything that, that you haven't done yet that you'd really like to do in a future episode? Sing. <laughs> Pitching an idea every season because Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid are still alive, and, and they died in 1906. So I think it'd be great to get like a young, good-looking kind of Robert Redford, Paul Newman, couple of guys in. Yeah. That idea would be too Anyone else want to add to the wish list? I quite liked uh, when we did the Murdoch effect. Uh, anybody see that? Where, uh, where our char characters uh, uh, jumped into the future. Uh, I thought that was a lot of fun, and, and sort of playing uh, uh, the, the role of the guy all of a sudden in the future from uh, uh, a previous century was a lot of fun. I don't know if we can really do that in normal course of, of the show, but uh, I really enjoyed doing that. I got to date Georgina right now. <laughs> A girl fight. A girl fight? I hear that there's an episode coming up we're about to shoot. I just heard about this where we, where uh, Georgina and I head off to an island for a girls' weekend. Could happen there. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna smoke cigars and drink whiskey. Yeah. Christina, you got all that? Maybe we can sing on the island. <laughs> And we'll all be nude. It'll be a nudist thing too. You did that already. You well, you did it already. Well, you did it too. Do you think? All right, we've reached our time. We have a couple of announcements. If you've lost your cell phone, someone has found it, and you can just go to a fan expo volunteer and get it. This person has your phone, so she's a hero today. Um, Tiff is coming, and Georgina, and Helene, and Yannick will all be on a live show that we're doing 12.30 every day. Uh, they won't be there every day, but you can go to cbc.ca slash live to see the schedule and come see them live on that show, talking Tiff, and also doing some, uh, some more signings afterwards. And of course, if you want to binge watch Murdoch Mysteries, you can go back to cbc.ca slash Murdoch Mysteries and do that and look forward to season seven in the fall. Thank you very much for coming out today, guys. Oh, thank you very much.